Frank LaRose is Ohio's Republican Secretary of State, which means he's in charge of overseeing our elections, including Issue 1, which is one of the most significant ballot initiatives in the country, and it's on the ballot right now. Frank LaRose is also lying, and I've brought the receipts. Issue 1 is about protecting our Constitution. I never said it's exclusively about abortion. That's a lie. This is 100% about keeping a radical pro-abortion amendment out of our Constitution. So yes, it's about abortion. I never said it's exclusively about abortion. This is 100% about keeping a radical pro-abortion amendment out of our Constitution. I never said it's exclusively about abortion. This is 100% about keeping a radical pro-abortion amendment out of our Constitution. Amanda Weinstein, welcome back to Against All Enemies. We got a few things to talk about today. Issue one in Ohio. It is disguised as some esoteric constitutional issue. It is all about uh, abortion and an extremist anti-woman argument that that they're trying to impose on Ohio. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's exactly right. And we even had Frank LaRose accidentally say it was all about trying to prevent the November ballot initiative to give women reproductive freedom. He's on tape. I mean, this is an anecdotal. He's on tape, accidentally admitting it. Yeah. Uh, So just give give us the, the sequence here. The issue one ballot initiative uh, is coming up on, on August 8th, but it doesn't have abortion written anywhere into the language. H- how does this work? So the Republicans know that in November, they were going to be facing a reproductive freedom ballot initiative. And they have seen what has happened in swing states like Michigan and red states like Kansas, where even in a red state like Kansas, 59% of the voters voted not to restrict abortion access. And in Michigan, 57 of 57% of the voters voted to pass a constitutional right to reproductive freedom. So this is very calculated here, right? So if you remember those numbers, 57% in Michigan, 59% in Kansas. So in Ohio, seeing what's coming in November, they decided that they wanted to change the threshold to 60%, a calculated move. They are betting that we can't get 60%, so they're going to change the rules. Right. So if you can't beat them, cheat them is essentially their strategy. Let's change the rules ahead of this November uh, initiative so that we make that we change the threshold from 50 percent to 60 percent to pass a constitutional amendment. And that's essentially what issue one in Ohio is that we'll be voting on on August 8th. So come November, when the vast majority of Ohioans want to enshrine abortion rights in our Constitution, the threshold the goalposts, if you will, will now be so far moved that that they'll be unreachable and, and really a defiance of the democratic will. That's exactly right. So far that had this been the rule of law, you know, for the last century, that we wouldn't have things like we wouldn't have voted to give women the right to vote in Ohio. There are so many things we wouldn't have in Ohio if this were law, which it's not. It is really aiming to change how our constitution works in Ohio. As a an economist slash sociologist, how do you look at the Republican Party of today nationally, but but let's use Ohio as a as a window into the National Republican Party and their increasingly anti-democratic bent, this this idea that they're not going to be able to win with the majority of the vote. So they're using mechanisms that don't require it. I mean, is it a death spiral or do they, do they come out of this somehow stronger if they're able to pull it off? Uh, They will come out of this stronger if they're able to pull this off. They know very well that the majority of the population in Ohio, the majority of the population of this nation are not with them. So what they are doing is they are trying to change the rules so that it doesn't require a majority to do the things that they want to do. They are trying to change the rules so that they don't have to follow the majority. This is part of the playbook, not only here in Ohio, this is part of their playbook nationally and in every state. In every state, if they can do this, they're going to try and do this. And this matters because 
We need to make sure it doesn't happen in Ohio, but it also doesn't happen in other states. But also what happens in Ohio will affect everyone else. It doesn't just affect reproductive freedom. It also affects, can we get fairer maps, right? So fairer maps would mean that we would have more Democrats potentially in office in Congress. We have more Democrats from Ohio right now because we did get fairer maps in this last election cycle. So these things will affect people across the nation as we see the Republicans chip away at our democracy. There are other striking examples of this loud extremist minority getting their way. And sometimes it's not at the state house where it's most visible. It's in school board meetings. It's in PTA meetings. And you have been following that as well. Can you give us some vignettes about just how effective that loud, agitating minority can be when they are organized? That's absolutely right. So if you look at the playbook in our schools, they know that they can't get the majority of parents to do things like these extremist book bans, banning Rosa Parks, you know, from schools for our kids. So instead, what they do is they actually bring people from out of the school district to come talk to the school board. So they look very closely at each school board's rules. And many school boards don't have a rule, for example, that you have to live in the district. So they find enough voices from outside the district who will come and speak at that district, acting as if they have children in that district when they don't. So you see, even at a local level, they use these little rules to get what they want in school boards, even if it's not their own school board. You're referring to this mythical they. There is actually real organization and real money behind these these movements. We talked to Ann Nelson about the, the shadow network of the CNP. Uh, where is that money coming into Ohio from? It's not a grassroots phenomenon. This is very top-down, very strategic, and we're being played if we don't see it for that. Absolutely. This is kind of this activism of Vox. They are going to fund these boxes of activism and make it look like a grassroots movement. It absolutely is not. So we see with issue one, a lot of money is coming from the Uline family, not in Ohio, to support issue one. Uh, and which is interesting because a lot of the messaging we had was, you know, we don't want special interests coming into Ohio, but it took a special interest from outside of Ohio to get money for issue one because the support for issue one couldn't come from in Ohio because the majority of Ohioans do not support issue one, which is why they had to do it in August. So the goal for doing it in August is we're, they're trying to get for the lowest turnout because the best shot they have at passing issue one is that nobody shows up to the polls. Hey everyone, if you've been watching this show, you've already heard me mention our sponsor, Storied Hats. Thanks to all of you who've already bought one. You know they are top quality hats made in fair trade facilities with sustainable materials. I've got a great new offer for listeners of this show. If you get one hat, it's 15% off. And if you get a second hat, that one is 50% off. Check them out, get a great hat or two, and support both our show and a small business that is doing its part for the planet. Thanks. Can you talk about the power to push back against that now? I've raised the alarm time and again on this show about the organization that we're up against, but something incredible has happened in Ohio over the last six months where we have seen this attempt to sneak an initiative by us completely implode this tranche of money coming in from out of state. And it's not some some large out of state interest group that really cares about pro-life issues. It's one billionaire providing the majority of this funding, one religious extremist billionaire doing it, and he has hit a wall, which is the people of Ohio. This has been really interesting to watch. So you have the typical established politicians in Columbus really trying to push this, and they have some of their people who are just following along. But you also see trucks with MAGA flags going by also with nose on issue one. You have people on both sides of the aisle 
outspoken people on both sides of the aisle saying, no, we do not want you to take away our voice. And that's essentially what issue one does if it passes. Saying yes to issue one is saying, yes, please take away my power as a voter and my voice as a voter and give it to the established Republicans down in Columbus. A no vote is saying, no, you don't get my voice. You don't get my vote. I want to keep my vote. And it's been interesting seeing that you have people who are very pro-freedom democracy on both sides of the aisle, some MAGA, some not, saying no on issue one. You alluded to this earlier, but the standard they're trying to change for amending the Constitution is over 100 years old, right? Mm -hmm. This is really fundamentally changing the way our Constitution in Ohio works. So you have Republicans saying that they're trying to protect our Constitution but they're trying to protect our constitution by fundamentally changing the way it's worked for a century, right? That doesn't quite make sense that you're trying to protect the constitution by changing the constitution. And it's really saying that the Republicans down in Columbus don't trust voters. They don't trust voters in Ohio to vote the way they want us to vote. That's really what issue one is saying. Remind us again of the national significance of this vote. Issue one, of course, is an Ohio ballot initiative, uh, but what happens in Ohio extends well beyond the borders uh, and other extremist legislatures and advocacy groups are looking at what is about to happen in Ohio and they're going to take their cues from it. Absolutely. So this is a playbook that we're going to see in other states for one. But if you look at our last election, where in the midterms, when we look at what happened there, Ohio actually sent more Democrats to Congress. And we actually sent a Democrat from Akron, who Akron has really never had a representative that represented Akron. Why? Because it had it was cut up into little pizza slices. And that's the way that they gerrymandered that section of the state so that Akron would not have a representative. So Amelia Sykes is our Congresswoman from Akron, and she is the first person to really represent Akron as a complete piece. This is the first time Akron's really been represented in Congress. And what that means is we have one more Democrat in Congress because we had a fairer map. And the reason we had a fairer map is because that's what voters said they wanted. Had voters not said that, That would be at least two fewer Democrats in Congress that we would have right now without those fairer maps, right? So if issue one passes, it takes away the voter's ability to say, I want fair maps. I want an independent citizen-led council to draw these maps. I don't want them gerrymandered. That would... (laughs) That was my dog's strong opinions on issue one as well. (laughs) <laughs> That's I, I, I heard an, an emphatic full throated no right there. Oh, the dogs are a no, right? The dogs are a hard no in this household. They're like, look, we're going to bark. Do not take away our right to bark. Um, but you can see uh, with issue one that this is a way to take away our voice. Actually, I voted today. So you can see my little sticker here today. So we voted early. So you can vote early up until Monday. And then Tuesday is the day to vote for everyone who doesn't vote early. Well, I think it's pretty clear that this initiative is going down, that the hundreds of millions of dollars spent uh, was not only wasted, but was a a clarion call for uh, for our democratic impulses and our power to push back against moneyed interests. Uh, And the clearest sign of that to me is how many of my 18 year old daughter's friends are out there. Uh, on on the lines carrying signs, she she has asked me a number of times. You're you're going to get to the polls on August eighth, right, Dad? So when you see that, that is a pretty clear sign that that we're on the winning side of history here. That's awesome. I have seen some friends and friends of friends on Facebook saying, "Hey, what's going on with issue one?" And I wanted just to see what the reaction was. And I looked at the comments, and the comments from all over resoundingly said, "No." don't vote for this. It takes away our voice. We don't want that. It also makes it harder for a ballot initiative to get on the ballot. So what it does is it actually gives the power any one county in the entire state could actually prevent a ballot initiative from going forward just if that county doesn't want it. And so it gives the power for one county to stop it for every other county across the state. And so it really takes the power away from the majority which is essential to what Republicans are doing right now nationally in every state. 
they want to chip away at our democracy. And this is how they're doing it right now in Ohio. Poll issue one is an extremist measure. It is going down on August 8th, but that is not to say we need to be complacent. There is, uh, what does Sherrod Brown say? You're either running unopposed or you're running scared. So let's run scared right up until August 8th. Vote like your freedom depends on it, because it does. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Ken. Call your friends. If you know what you want in Ohio, give them a call. Make sure they're voting.